All right, class, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at parabolas and the vertex form for them. Parabolas are just a uh, U-shaped graph, and they come whenever we have an X squared, a Y equals X squared. And, and that just means that somewhere in the formula, X is being squared. Okay, so we're going to take a look at what this formula does and what it means. This is vertex form because the vertex is HK. So the vertex is H comma K. Now notice that there's a minus sign in front of the H. Okay, that means that H is actually a positive number and the minus sign is supposed to be there. Okay. Now, if we're looking at this equation, if we had numbers in here, the K causes the graph to go up or down, the same as the sign. The H the minus sign there, causes the graph to go left to right, opposite of the sign. That's because the negative sign is actually supposed to be in there. And finally, the A, the number in front, um, tells you how steep the graph is. Okay, and if the number is, if it's bigger than 1, if the A is bigger than 1, it actually acts like slope. Okay, now it does not act like slope if you've got a fraction. So this does not work if you've got something like 1 half or 1 third, anything like that. This does not work like slope. Okay, and you will see both situations. But if it's bigger than one, it does act like slope, and as long as it's a whole number, actually, bigger number than one, and it's a whole number, probably, would be good. Now, the last thing that A does is that also, if it's positive or negative, uh, it changes our graph also. If it's positive, we have a happy graph, we have a happy uh, parabola. If it's negative, it means we have a sad parabola. Okay, so that also has to do with our max and minimum value down over here. Now the maximum and minimum value is all based on whether or not you have a happy or sad graph. If you have a maximum, it means you have a negative A. If you have a minimum, it means you have a positive A. Because up here, if you notice, there's a lowest point, a minimum value, when it's positive. And when, if, when it's uh, negative, you have a maximum value. Okay, this is the highest point here. So this is a max and this over here is a min. Okay. Now, why that's useful, or why we need to know that, is because notice it's happening at what we call the vertex. The vertex is these this point where the graph's going down, and then it bends and it goes back the other direction. So that bend is the vertex. So the max and min happens at the vertex. Okay. So the vertex is critical to have and to know what it is for each one of these particular graphs. So speaking of graphs, let's take a look at the standard parent parabola. Now the parent parabola is called the parent because it's the simplest one. It's the simplest form of this graph. Notice the equation has, there can be an A in here, there can be an H in here, there can be a K. So there's all sorts of things we can do to it. This is the most simple form of the graph. Now the most simple parabola has an H, K. So basically if I put these, the A in here, X minus H, squared plus k. It has an hk of 0, 0, because there's nothing in this equation. So basically, we are, you could say there's plus 0 on the outside, and inside the parentheses squared, there was a 0 there. Now, out in front, there's really a 1. Okay, So this a is a 1. So using these three numbers, this bit of information, we can actually graph this. So the vertex is at 0, 0. That means I start right there at the origin. Now the A, I say it kind of acts like slope because it gives you, what I mean by that is it gives you your first coordinate. So I could actually go up one over one and find my first coordinate and go up one the other, and up one over one the other direction. It gives me my coordinate over there. And that's actually all the information you'll need in the lab is you just need two coordinates. You need the vertex. So that's your first place you click is right there. And then you go up one over one, click right there. And magically, the lab will just do the U for you. You don't have to even draw it yourself. And that's your graph. So only two coordinates, and you'll be good to go. So again, the only two coordinates I needed were 
the origin, the vertex, and then that next click point, and then it just fills the rest of it in for you like that. Okay? So let's take a look at one that's a little bit more difficult. This has got everything going on, where we've got an A, and then we've got a H and a K. All right. So my HK is two, three. So in the lab, what you would do is you you go over, or sorry, negative three. You go over two, down three, and we click our point right there. And then the lab's going to want you to click another point. Well, please do not treat that exactly like slope, because I said whenever it's a fraction, it's not slope. Do not go up. 1 over 4 and click your other dot and make your graph like that because it'll be wrong. Okay? Does not work that way. When it's a whole number, you can do that, but when it's not a whole number, like this one, you have to do a little bit more work. And what we do is you have to plug in an x value to get a second coordinate. So what that looks like is I need to plug in a number here for x, work it out, and get my other answer. Okay? Now, because I know, well, looking at the fact that I have a 1 fourth out in front, I want to multiply a number here that's going to cancel out with my 4 so I don't have any fractions. So thinking through some numbers, well, first of all, I could put in a 2. If I put in a 2 right here, okay, that's going to cancel out, and I'll end up with negative 3. Well, I already had that coordinate, so that doesn't help me out very much. So, see, you're just playing with numbers until you get it to cancel out. So, plug in a different number. Well, if I put in a 4 right here, if I put a 4 right here, what will happen is I'll have 4 minus 2 squared. That'll be 2. Sorry, 4 minus 2 is 2 squared, which is 4. So, really, I have 1 half, sorry, 1 half, 1 fourth times the 4 minus 3. So now what happened was, so I'm over at 4, basically, I'm right here, okay, and I plugged it in, 4 minus 2 is 2, squared is 4, and then if I work this out, these are going to cancel and end up with 1 minus 3. 1 minus 3 is equal to negative 2. So what that means is I can go ahead and go at 4, down 2, and that's the other point that I click. If I click this one, and this one on the lab, it will fill in the rest for me. I don't have to do any more work. So that's all you need to do is just pick another x value, plug it in, and whatever the solution is, just click that point, and you'll have your parabola. Now when I say click that, there's, there's a bottom row underneath your graph, and there's a little parabola that actually has two points on it. Click that icon, and it will ask you to click your first point and click your second point on the actual graph itself. So let's go ahead and try one more. We've got a whole number this time, so it's actually a little bit easier. We don't have to do as much work as this last problem. Um, speaking of the last problem, let's try. Let's plug in one more point, just so that you, hopefully, what I did was making sense. So again, I saw my vertex was, was 2, negative 3, 2, negative 3. Let's say I wanted to pick 8, okay? 8 minus 2. Okay, 8 minus 2 would be 6. 6 squared would be 36 and then times one-fourth. 36 divided by 4, and then minus 3. So 36 divided by 4 should give me 9 minus 3, and then that's going to give me 6. So basically, if I plotted my two points now, I'd go over to 8 and go up 6, click my second point here, and now the lab will go ahead and fill that in for you. Okay. So I just, sorry, I just felt like I wanted to show you one more example of what I was doing in case you were a little bit confused. Hopefully that made it clear. Now, Again, back to this example. Um, if I was, sorry, this is supposed to be squared. Uh, if I was to do this example, this is supposed to be negative 2. It's really x minus 0 squared minus 4. They won't, the lab won't give it to you like this. It'll, it'll look like this one with the actual square symbol. Sorry again. Um, but I want you to recognize that really it's minus 0, which means my vertex is 0, comma, negative 4. So I would actually put a dot at 0, negative 4, right here on the lab. Now I just need one more point. Now in this situation, the negative 2 does sort of act like slope. It'll help me at least get my second point. From negative 4, I just have to go down 2 over 1 and put my dot. And it will fill in the, I kind of missed, but it'll fill in the parabola for you just like that. Okay? Now, if you wanted to, you could plug in a point, a coordinate, just like we did on the last problem, but it'll do the same thing. Now, let's just kind of work through a little concept check just to make sure that we got what I've been 
trying to explain so far. Looking at this, each one of these, we're just going to kind of match these up. Notice it says negative x squared plus 2. Well, first of all, I'm looking for a sad face, but they're all sad face, so that didn't help me out very much. But I know that the vertex is going to start up 2. So I can get rid of this graph, because it went, it didn't go up 2. Get rid of this graph, for this graph. This is the only graph that went up 2. So A matches with D. Okay. So now let's take a look at the second one. The second one, B... It has negative, so again, the graph is going to be sad, but then this one says it goes down 2. Now again, notice the negative 2 is on the outside of the square. That's why we're moving up and down. So these two moved up and down. These two are going to move left and right. Okay, so hopefully you're noticing that this one is going to match up with C. So B matches up with big C. Okay, now negative, again, it's a sad graph. The plus 2, this is opposite of the sign, so it actually doesn't move to the right, it moves to the left, 2. Okay, So that is B. B matches up with little c. And finally, down here we've got negative 2, so it actually it moves to the right, 2. Again, it's opposite of the sign when it's on the inside of the parentheses, left to right, opposite of the sign. So right 2 matches up with A. And now we've matched all of them. So hopefully that kind of helped clarify the inside of the parentheses moves left and right because it's the x value of the vertex. And the outside of the parentheses, in other words, the outside of the square, moves it up and down because that's the y value of the vertex.